Hello and welcome back to Tiny Artist TV. In today's episode, we are going to be continuing the Zodiac series where I take Zodiac constellations and interpret them as D&D archetypes, as well as including um, facts and inspiration from the particular birth flower and birth stone for the month. So since this month is September, we are also going to be looking at the September birthstone, which is a sapphire, and September birth flowers, which are asters and morning glories. Um, very fitting considering the lore behind this particular star sign today. So without further ado, let's get into that. And normally I would start with the flowers and the birthstones and lead into the lore, but I think it makes more sense to start with the uh, overall inspiration being Virgo and the history behind that star sign. Now there is a lot of conflicting uh, delegation as to who Virgo is supposed to be. The most consistent one I found was that Virgo is supposed to be a representation of Astraea, but she has also been attributed to Demeter, Persephone, Ceres, <laughs> um, quite a few others. As a matter of fact, uh, according to one website that I found, uh, Virgo, or the Maiden, ranks among the oldest known constellations dating back before the Babylonians and Sumerians who knew her as Istar. Uh, she is known by many other different civilizations by a variety of different names, but is always associated with the same star group. To the Egyptians, she was Isis, goddess of fertility. In India, she was Kanya, mother of Krishna. The Hindus saw Virgo as Kalani, the maiden. The Persians called her Kosha, the ear of wheat. The Hebrews called her Bethula, translated as abundance in harvest. And in Western mythology, she is Astraea, daughter of Zeus and Temis, Zeus's first wife. She has also been associated with the goddess of justice and is carrying the scales of justice, Libra. Although most renderings of Virgo show the scales at her feet, she is usually drawn holding one or two sheaves of wheat in honor of the harvest. So we'll see this as I go into the other uh, websites that I found explaining the mythology behind Virgo. As she's usually associated with fertility and harvest because of the sheaf of wheat that she is seen holding. Hence why this particular Virgo iteration that I'm drawing is holding this staff made out of wheat and this Virgo is a cleric, uh, Azamar, so I can kind of get into that because I'm gonna save the kind of D&D &D stuff for later. It's kind of arbitrary as far as the overall design because the most things that feed into the design are the star sign and then of course the flower and the birthstone. Getting back into Virgo, so here is where did this, and this is all just from one website. I have several tabs pulled up with several myths and I will get into all of them. So this one in particular leads in by saying that Virgo has many different legends that identify the star group. In the Greek myth, Virgo is named for Demeter. Now this is one of the only websites I could find that attributed Virgo to Demeter. Most websites will attribute her to either Astraea or Persephone, Demeter's daughter, um, but continuing on, uh, Virgo, according to this website, in one myth was named for Demeter, the earth goddess, and celebrates the arrival of spring and the growing season. Hades, the god of the underworld, became enamored with Demeter's daughter, Persephone, promising that he would one day marry her. It is very interesting that this particular website attributes Virgo to Demeter for this reason, when the other websites that attribute Virgo to Persephone tie it to the same story, but instead of... it's Virgo representing the, the bringing of spring. It's representing the return of Persephone. So this interpretation is basically interpreting it as Demeter's joy and her returning to service as the goddess of the harvest versus Persephone returning as the goddess of the harvest because they kind of have very similar domains as far as that's concerned. And so it's 
different attributions for the same story for different reasons. And so I think this is one of the reasons why this is the only website I found that kind of leaned into attributing Demeter to Virgo, whereas the other ones will just attribute it to Persephone, again, tied in with the same story. In another myth, and again, this is the one that I found was the most consistent, um, in another myth, Virgo is the celestial incarnation of Astrea, the goddess of innocence and purity. In the mythological story of creation, Zeus created and sent Pandora, I'm sure some of you are familiar with Pandora, the first woman endowed with the attributes of every god down to earth as a punishment to Prometheus for stealing fire from the gods and man for accepting it. She carried with her a box which was never to be opened, but naturally because of her curiosity, she opened it anyway and let all of the evil escape into the world before she could get the box closed. At the bottom of the box lay hope, which did not escape. With the earth, now unbearable for the immortals, they one by one returned to the heavens to live, and Astrea, being the last to leave earth, was immortalized as the constellation Virgo when she eventually retreated. So, this is... This iteration of Virgo is the most uh, consistent one that I was able to find. Again, there are some other attributions, but I will get into the other Astrea Virgo mythology just to kind of back that up. So here on theoi.com, under the Titans and Gods tab, we have Astrea, was the virgin goddess of justice. During the golden age, she dwelt upon the earth with mankind, but was driven away by the increasing lawlessness of the subsequent Bronze Age. And of course, this lines up with Pandora unleashing chaos and then eventually driving the gods back into Olympus or driving them to want to leave earth to go to Olympus. Zeus then set her amongst the stars as the constellation Virgo. Astrea was closely identified with the goddess Dike, Justice, and Nemesis, Rightful Indignation. Now, the next website, Gods and Monsters, I have gone here to do light research into the star signs before. This one almost reads more of an opinion piece than a more academic, and I do typically tend to look for academic sources when I'm doing research for these videos. But this one brought up some interesting points about the origin and perception of Virgo. I've decided not to include the information from that website in this video just because there are some just straight up erroneous things in it, but I will still include the link so you can read it on your own and come to your own conclusions. But uh, moving on to the next website, which is more academic, um, very much so considering that it pinpoints all of the star locations within the uh within the constellation and is just much more credible as far as doing research for these kinds of videos um from space.com which is the virgo mythology according to space.com and they actually reference another website that i've also done research from earth sky but i didn't on this one because I had enough sources at this point. Um, in some stories, Virgo is Persephone, the daughter of the Greek goddess Demeter, who ruled over the harvest. Persephone was kidnapped by the god of the underworld, Hades, and Demeter's grief caused crops to wither. Zeus, king of the gods, demanded that Hades return Persephone so that the harvest could once again be fruitful. This, this is a... Some, some versions have this, some versions have Zeus as being very indifferent as he usually is. I just wanted to disclaim that. Anyway, um, commanded that Hades return Persephone so the harvest could once again be fruitful. With one catch, Persephone could not eat anything on earth. Hades gave her a pomegranate to break the deal. And now Persephone must stay with Hades in the underworld for four months each year. Some, uh, the legend I've heard was six months and six months because she ate six pomegranate seeds. But anyway, her return coincides with the start of springtime when the constellation Virgo is yet again visible in the northern evening sky. In others, Virgo relates to Dike, who we mentioned earlier as well, the Greek goddess of justice. She is said to be holding wheat in one hand, which in the constellation is the star Spica. 
Nearby, Libra fits the theme as well, keeping the scales of justice nearby their relevant goddess. As with all constellation mythologies, various cultures create different stories. For example, Virgo takes after Atergatis, the corn goddess from ancient Syria. Personality Traits of Virgo Those who fall under Virgo's star sign are classified as humble, industrious, practical, logical, caring, hardworking. Again, very much so a archetype of person that you would associate with someone who, you know, tends the fields, is associated with fertility and harvest. Um, I know a cavalcade of Virgos, and most of them are pretty practical. Um, some famous Virgos, of course, include Miss Jenna Marbles and Beyonce. Um, and Jenna <laughs> is always talking about how she needs structure because she's a Virgo, and my husband is a Virgo. My sister-in-law, my father-in-law are all Virgos, um, and they are very, they, they appreciate structure, I'll just say that. <laughs> now at this point I have spoken at length about Virgo and Virgo's possible origins and iterations, so I think it's time to move on to the other inspirations for this drawing, which would be finally the birthstone, the birth flower, and then if I have enough time, the D&D &D, uh, class. And so we'll start with the September birthstone. Blue Sapphire is one of the zodiac birthstones for September falling under Virgo, which the dates for Virgo are August 23rd to September 23rd. And according to the website that I'm looking at now, monthlybirthstones.com, there is an alternative birthstone for the latter half for Libra being Lapis Lazuli. So both of these are, uh, well, one is a precious, one is considered a semi-precious, but they're both blue, but we're focusing on sapphires. Blue sapphire is extremely valuable and is one of the four precious gemstones together with diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. The origin of the word sapphire appears to come from the Latin sapphiris, or the Greek sapphiros, meaning blue or precious stone. The brilliant blue sapphire is associated with truth, sincerity, constancy, and purity of the soul, which lines up with a lot of what we saw under Virgo's portfolio, considering that she is the goddess of purity and precision and innocence and justice and all that good stuff. And since I like to cross-reference my sources as far as accuracy, I looked into a couple other websites as far as sapphire symbolism and literally just type this into Google and you can get a bunch of websites that say pretty much the same thing about sapphire symbolism. But in a nutshell, it boils down to, there's one website that says sapphires have been seen as a symbol of the heavens, guardians of innocence, bestowers of truth, promoters of good health, preservers of chastity. It is believed to bring gifts of fulfillment, joy, prosperity, inner peace, and beauty. And then a second source says that they symbolize wisdom, virtue, good fortune, and holiness for royalty. So again, a lot of that lines up with what we've seen with uh, Virgo's portfolio. Um, if we go with the Astrea, um, interpretation, which again, I believe is the most consistent interpretation across what I was able to find. So now we're moving on to the September birth flowers, of which there are two again, um, focusing on the aster because of how it ties into the Virgo myth, but the secondary flower for September is the morning glory. Asters once symbolized revolution. They were used to honor soldiers who were lost in war, and they also served as inspiration for painters and writers. Not, not as consequential to what we have here, but the aster is a member of the daisy family, which also includes dahlias, marigolds, and sunflowers. In Greek, aster means star. So Astrea's other name is daughter of the stars or star maiden. Um, because while one myth says that she is the daughter of Zeus and Temis, another one says that she is the daughter of Titans Astraeus, god of the dusk, and Eos, god of the dawn. So back to the aster flower. 
Uh, in Greek, aster means star, which is a reference to the star-like appearance of the plant's flowers. In ancient Greek and Roman cultures, the burning of aster leaves was believed to scare away snakes and ward off evil spirits. They were considered sacred flowers to the Greek and Roman gods. Greek mythology pinpoints the aster's beginning being from the tears of the goddess Astraea. Which is why in this depiction of Astraea, I do have tears running down her face and the aster flowers sort of floating away from her. Purple asters are considered a royal color and symbols of wisdom. White asters represent innocence. Red is a sign of devotion and passion and pink symbolizes love and kindness. So I've chosen purple asters mainly for having a cohesive color palette versus any particular symbolism. Had I wanted to lean more into Virgo's mythology, I would have included some white asters as well, which might have made the composition pop, but I like the sort of dark, dreamy purple and dark blue that would be in like a deep night sky. So I went with that. I also went with purple because morning glories are typically of a dark purple, blue, dark pinky variety. So there's that. Like many vining plants, morning glories have long been associated with love. Morning glories have symbolized a love that was never returned, but has also been seen as a symbol of undying love. Each color holds a different meaning, of course. Blue, representing enduring love, desire, and power. Purple, symbolizing grace, wealth, and hopefulness. Pink, as a sign of gratitude and energy red as passion and strength and white like many other flowers symbolizing purity and innocence so maybe i should have included some white flowers in here but again i, I like the the deep spacey color palette that i went with it's fine it's fine and last but not least of course explaining the class decision so choosing to make i had a choice so I have four star signs left, in including Virgo. So it would be Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and then ending with Sagittarius. Which means I also have four D&D classes left. I have the Cleric, the Paladin, the Barbarian, and I guess we'll include Artificer in that. Even though technically I did two Druids. But this, for me, was a choice between paladin or cleric paladin because of her association with dk and justice and also virgo just being known as the uh virgin goddess of justice in association with dk as paladins are usually seen as these stalwart sort of uh paragons of justice and you picture the the big armor and the sword but considering that Virgo is also more so depicted as a maiden of fertility and a maiden of the harvest, I felt that cleric was a better fit because clerics are more so seen as more nurturing. If we're going with paladin and cleric are sort of two sides of the same coin. They're both typically played as religious warriors. Whereas a cleric is seen as more of the healing and studious side and the paladin is seen as more of the frontline and defender side. So I went with the cleric because I felt that that fit Virgo's personality and lore better. So that's that. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of another Zodiac video. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this next installation. As mentioned, there are only three more left after Virgo, and then I will be finished with this series to move on to bigger and better things. But for now, uh, check out the links below if you want to do your own little research into the star signs. Of course, a lot of this is pretty easy to find. Um, but that is it for today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. But until then, have a weird day.